Joining us right now is former U.S. Senator Pat Toomey, also former U.S. Senator Heidi Heitkamp. She's the director of the University of Chicago's Institute of Politics and a CNBC contributor. Good morning uh, to you both. Uh, Senator Toomey, I'm so curious about your reaction to, uh, to, to the Fitch downgrade. I, I'm sure you, like so many others, are, are, have been, you've been ringing the bell on this for a long time. The question is, do, do you think that the, the downgrade was right? Well, Andrew, thanks for having me. Um, from a technical point of view, no, right? I mean, there's no increase in the likelihood that the U.S. government is going to miss a debt payment. We borrow money in our own native currency. That's not going to happen. But the bigger picture, Fitch has exactly right. We are on an unsustainable fiscal path. The ultimate consequence probably isn't a missed Treasury payment, but it's a, probably a disastrous run of inflation when we try to monetize a debt we can't afford. So I'm grateful that Fitch has put a spotlight and is forcing the discussion about this runaway debt that we have been accumulating. And um, I'll tell you, it's going to take two things to uh, deal with this. It's going to take presidential leadership, and it's going to take divided government. And that's why it's been particularly uh, just tragic and disastrous that with recent administrations, we've had divided government, but we've had no presidential leadership, and we haven't had a consensus to deal with this. Um, but. Uh, this uh, this is a reminder that we are on an unsustainable path. So, uh, Heidi, what do you, what do you think you do about this? It was sort of the question that, that I asked uh, Joe Manchin earlier, which is, you have a public that wants to keep spending. We can talk about this. We can have these conversations on TV. People can wring their hands. They can lament the state of, of what may be for their grandchildren. But the truth is that in this ADD society, that, that everybody wants something now. And that ultimately is the problem. Well, if you look at where debt and deficit ranks in voting issues, it's not there. And so you can talk about divided government, you can talk about a president, but until voters start punishing politicians, who aren't paying attention, we are not going to get results. Now, we can talk about leadership. No one has a plan for fixing this because no one wants to stick their neck out. The last time we had a politician with a plan was Paul Ryan, and he's no longer in politics. And you think about this. No, the, the Democrats don't want to admit that we have an entitlement problem that's going to lead to busting the budget as we get older. We baby boomers. The Republicans have signed pledges never to raise taxes. And so you've got this impasse that is political. And we have voters who say, give me more, like you said, Andrew, give me more and I don't want to pay for it because I think somebody else is getting something and I should get something too. And there's no sense of mutual sacrifice when you look at the budget and, and budget controls. Okay, so but rather than throw, but, but, okay, but, but Senator Toomey, the, rather than throw up our hands, which is what we have been doing for a long time, what do you do about that? So, actually, I think uh, the voting public is uh, beginning to focus on this increasingly. And let's, let's not suggest that this is all uh, equal on both sides of the, of the aisle or both sides of this equation. The fact is spending has surged massively. Revenue to the federal government has grown, but it hasn't kept up. Way back in the Barack Obama administration, spending was about 21 percent of GDP for most of those years. It's at 25 percent now. Under Obama, revenue was more like 17 and a half percent of GDP. It's at 19 now. It's gone up. This is as a percentage of GDP, but you can't sustain the six percentage points of GDP worth of deficits because of the way it, it adds this. Here's, here's what I think is very encouraging. Increasing numbers of Republicans have made a big issue of getting spending under control, finally doing something. You saw this, this challenge that uh, Speaker McCarthy had. Much of the issues were focused on fiscal discipline, taking discretionary spending back to last year's level, for instance. Uh, that's a beginning sign that maybe there is some interest on the part of at least some voters and it's manifesting itself in Congress. Uh, that is, I agree with Heidi, we will need that pressure from voters. It, it does seem, though, that when, whenever somebody wants to limit spending, they want to limit spending on things that the other party likes more than they do. Uh, uh, former Senator Heitkamp, uh, isn't what's really called for here some innovation in politics? It seems like in the age of data and the Internet, politicians have gotten better at reacting. But what about shaping a narrative and figuring out how to get voters 
to care about this in a way that builds political capital that can then be expended to actually fix the situation. It's hard, but it seems like there are times, maybe narrow times, and it's seldom, but there are times when we get a politician who's able to, to figure that out. Well, let me tell you, all of the groups, the insider groups, the Committee for Responsible uh, you know, Budget, which I'm part of, um, you know, the Peterson Institute, they all talk in Washington. We've got to take this message out to the people and really explain. And one of the big problems that we have is governors will pat themselves on the back saying, we have a balanced budget. Why doesn't the federal government? The whole while that 30 to 40 percent of their spending is federal spending. And so we've got to be honest about this budget. We've got to be honest as politicians about the long term consequences to our kids. And we're going to have to ask everybody to sacrifice. Sacrifice. It's interesting. McCarthy, the original proposal had a had a reduction for ethanol. Well, he was held hostage because not in my backyard. You aren't going to cut a program in my backyard. And so there has to be an agreement of mutual sacrifice. And when you get to that, it runs against political reality where you want to say you're cutting Medicare and Medicaid. And on the other side, they're saying you're raising taxes. And then we get the political you know, un unwillingness to address this on a bipartisan basis. And I want to respond to Pat's point. 25% of this debt was run up during the so-called greatest economy ever in the Trump years. So let's not be too quick to point the finger at Democrats. This is an uh, equal opportunity problem. I, look, I, I seem to remember there was a bit of a pandemic that occurred during several of those yeah, years. And, 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 and there was a look, natural Heidi, crisis you know, that Obama the, the had to clean Biden up. administration has dramatically expanded the size of government, and it's meant to stay that way. And that's a big part of this problem.